You know, there are two issues that trump all others when it comes to securing the future of this nation. Two challenges the new Albanese government ought to be more conscious of than anything else. They are, of course, our national security at a time of looming peril and our economic prosperity, which is under threat from debt, inflation and the possibility of global recession. On national security, as you know, I've been complimentary towards the new government. They have held firm on key foreign policy positions. They've been proactive and consistent. They've got a huge challenge ahead, of course, to boost our military hardware and personnel, but you can't fault them on this issue so far. Then there's the economy, and on that they are already increasing the harm to this nation. Labor are prioritising their own delusions about saving the planet above the need for Australians to have a prosperous future and a growing economy. They promised cheaper electricity, can you believe it? And we are already seeing prices skyrocketing with the Reserve Bank forecasting more increases. Yet they're now doubling down on their climate policies, emissions reductions policies that will only make our power more expensive and make our industries less successful. And they know, they must know, because they have access to the same data that we have, they know that this will make no difference to the climate because our fiddling around with 1% of global emissions is a drop in the ocean when global emissions continue to rise. Yes, around the world, in total, no matter what we do, emissions continue to rise which means nothing improves. Undeterred, however, the Climate Minister, Chris Bowen, today reconfirmed plans to change the so-called safeguards mechanism, looking for ideas to give it more teeth as the government tries to force our 200 largest producers of greenhouse gases to cut their emissions. So I'm very much looking forward to getting some feedback from industry and climate groups about some of the finer details, but this is really important. We need to reduce emissions uh, very substantially by these big uh, facilities. Yeah, we need to reduce our emissions, apparently. But why? Well, to meet Labor's targets, the promises they've made to the United Nations that they subsequently legislated. We need to cut our emissions only to meet Labor's targets. There's no other logical reason. It won't change the environment, There'll be no discernible environmental benefit, no change to the climate at all. But they want to do this all the same. It's all about getting to net zero, even though the International Energy Agency says that can't be done on existing technology, a proposition that nobody contests, but most people seem to ignore. So in Europe, power prices are going through the roof thanks to climate policies, and we have Dutch farmers protesting against drastic measures to lower their emissions, measures that will destroy their livelihoods. And in Germany, even the Greens have had to swallow their pride and extend the life of nuclear reactors because renewables can't deliver the reliable and affordable power they need. Yeah, there is climate and energy madness gripping the world, which I like to call out here, but which most media just encourages or goes along with. I showed you the other day how psychologist, author and commentator Jordan Peterson had focused on this delusion, including in reference to Australia, and I caught up with him today. These ideas that we need to cut back on economic growth and make energy expensive is not only going to hurt poor people dreadfully, like to the point of starvation, but also not do anything positive for the planet because poor, desperate people can't be environmentally conscious. Yeah, lifting people out of poverty is the answer, not creating more poverty. I'll have more with Jordan Peterson later. But the key proposition is this. Governments should consider the costs and the benefits of everything they do. It's so straightforward, cost benefit analysis. We need them to take actions that deliver greater benefit than the costs they impose. We already know what climate action has done to our electricity prices, our power security and the plight of manufacturing in this country. Yet Labor promises to do more of the same and expects the opposite result. And let me show you the dodgy modelling on which they base this magic pudding economics. This is Labor's detailed plan to not only cut emissions but also reduce costs 
and deliver more than 600,000 jobs. The claims are highly questionable, to say the least. Even this modelling says less than 64,000 jobs will be created directly. The other 540,000 jobs would be indirect. Sounds like a jobs bonanza, doesn't it? But have a look at one section detailing jobs from additional spending on transmission. It predicts 13,500 jobs in direct construction, tens of billions of dollars worth, but then more than 100,000 jobs indirectly because of access to cheaper electricity, supposedly, and then another 300,000 jobs from all the trade and domestic benefits of low-cost renewable energy. Really? What low-cost renewable energy? Since we've been pushing renewables, costs have only gone up because renewables are intermittent. We've forced out cheap baseload power and the dispatchable energy has come at a premium when we've needed it. And to highlight the magic pudding nature of this, look at this bit of the report. It talks about induced jobs created in unrelated sectors, partly because they avoid the damage of global warming to our economy and reap the benefits of this mythical low-cost energy. This is literally insane. We know our policies will have zero effect on the climate because global emissions continue to rise. So to factor in the bonus of escaping global warming is ludicrous and deceptive, egregiously so. And how can you factor in low-cost power when the lived experience here and around the world is the opposite? The exact opposite, more expensive electricity. This stuff is nonsense, yet it passes for public policy nowadays. The coalition went way too far down this path. It was their biggest mistake, signing up to net zero. Now Labor is committed to imposing drastic costs on us, on our country, and it knows the benefits are either non-existent or so tiny as to be indiscernible. It'll take a while but eventually this will be the ruin of the Albanese government. Let's hope it's not the ruin of Australia.